Hi, I'm Tom Bancroft. Welcome to my studio. Today we're going to talk about creating a heroic male. So basically a superhero. Um, but just the male version, the female version, that's a whole nother problem and a whole nother lots of information. We're just going to talk about the male version. And uh, there are so many different ways to create a superhero. Um, now my background is Disney animation. So we're, I'm going to concentrate on more of an animated style version of this heroic male. And so my background is I've worked on a bunch of different Disney films. I worked from Unrescuers Down Under, and Beauty and the Beast, Lion King, Aladdin, Pocahontas, and Milan, uh, and a bunch of others. And uh, But I've also done character design. Uh, after I left Disney, I created two books called uh, Creating Characters with Personality and Character Mentor. They both become bestsellers at a lot of art schools around the world. Um, and so I really have gotten into character design too um, through, through these years. And so. Uh, I'm going to apply uh, a little bit of that to creating this heroic male. So we're going to talk about how to approach designing your own heroic male in a pretty much animated style. So we're going to look at flow and really keep things kind of moving. First of all, let's talk about tools. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask about what kind of pencils and paper. You know, in the end, I really feel strongly it's all about drawing ability and it's less about those things. But I do understand, you know, having a nice pencil or having good paper, it only helps, right? So I will talk about, I use very simple uh, uh, supplies, and I want to talk about a couple. So one is the Prismacolor Color Erase, and that's the light blue. And next to that is the exact same thing, but it's in red. So that's the Prismacolor uh, Color Erase Red. And I love to use either one of these, and it really doesn't matter. Um, today I'm probably going to use the red because it's a little darker and you'll be able to see it, but either one is great. I just like to really use kind of, the, and they're a little waxier, a little softer, so I, I can now kind of, I like to carve out my drawings, basically. That's what I'm doing, and to me, this is sort of the rough past. If Michelangelo's starting with, you know, a big piece of marble, the rough of just getting it kind of close, taking off the stuff you don't want, uh, is kind of what I feel like this, uh, the colored pencil version is, is just getting that sketch down and then I can go back in with graphite, and that for that I'm just using any, you can use, I like to use soft pencils, so this one is a, a drawing uh, pencil, and you really can't find these anymore, but you want to use like a 2B to a 4B, somewhere in there. Um, I know a lot of comic book artists, they use harder pencils, and they use mechanical pencils, uh, but it's also because they're creating uh, uh, comic books that need to be really tight, and. Um, what we're doing today uh, is more like sketchbook sketching and designing characters. You kind of want to have a softer pencil, I think. So that's some of the pencils that I like to use. Um, today I'm just working on normal paper. Um, and But let's get into it and um, talk about simplifying your anatomy. So uh, one of the key things of drawing a superhero, uh, especially an animated superhero, uh, is line mileage. That was a term that we used at Disney quite a bit um, because it meant uh, uh, having a lot of line mileage was a negative and line mileage means a lot of lines to your drawing, to your design of your character. And so some characters like say Jafar has a lot of details and a lot of little pieces and things like that and especially in his face there's a bunch of lines um, but then he'll have a pretty open body because he's it's a pretty simplified body. Um, so, and Triton was another one uh, from, Area, from Little Mermaid uh, that had a lot of line mileage. He was a tough character to draw and it took a long time to create every single drawing. So, it, that's what's kind of, that's how the animated style has sort of evolved, you know, to the Bruce Timm Batman animated show. How you see, we can compare that version of Batman to the comic book version like Neil Adams would have done. They're, they're worlds apart. And it's because they need to really, really simplify it. And, and they've taken it to an art form. So now where it's been so simplified, like in the Batman animated show by Bruce Timm, that it's, uh, it's like a, a graphic design. It's so beautiful. So we're gonna, we may not go that far where we get that stylized, but I, ju I do want you to know you can. Um, so with my background being Disney, um, my, I always tend to kind of fall around there somewhere it's where it's got a little bit of detail but um, not as simplified as, as a, like a Bruce Timm Batman. So let's talk about this. So simplifying the anatomy is the important part. Now I'm not going to get a lot into uh, just you know uh, describing anatomy and giving a whole uh, lesson on anatomy. That 
kind of takes years to learn really and you gotta go life drawing but I have done enough research with anatomy I've, I've read a lot of books on it growing up and stuff and done life drawing so I can hopefully get you through it and I want to show you simplified ways that hopefully will give you some flow and movements when you design a character so let's start with uh, let's see just really simple I'm, notice I'm drawing off the side of the pencil so I like to sketch with the side especially when I'm just doing very simplified uh, drawings you know it always starts with a circle and I'm gonna draw just normal proportion male so I do the circle I add the kind of the V shape for the head like a tube shape for the neck and then uh, for the chest it's kind of a kind of a rounded square kind of an oval but a, but a little bit more square and then uh, I leave a gap and that would be for the abs and things and then here's the pelvis and I just basically it's like drawing some briefs you know it's like a triangle and then out of that are the tube shape uh, legs and note that I'm even as I'm drawing I'm, I'm drawing through you know I'm not drawing just perfect lines I'm drawing through I'm drawing scribbly I'm overlapping lines and again that's sort of part of the sculpting but it's also part of me wanting to make it feel dimensional um, and then I'll just like add little ovals for the knees and then more tapered tubes at the bottom here which would be the the lower part of the legs into the ankles just wedge shapes for the feet and a wedge is basically a triangle and a rectangle put together okay uh, then I jump back up here and add some ovals for the shoulders and note I'm I'm overlapping it a little bit over the the chest because they do they all all the muscles sort of tie together and then a lot of times I'll just I'll add like a flowing line here for the arms and what that gets me is I don't want I don't want to ever have just straight tube arms or legs so as you know as you can see I'm I'm really being conscious of a little bit more of a straight on one side a little bit more curves on the, the other side I'm gonna do the same with these tubes is that they are pretty much parallel but I'm being careful that then I add a little bit of um, flow through the whole thing and you get that from not making you know everything parallel and and the curves that are now uh, we have a natural curve to our arms even when, when our arms are straight there's a there's a bend to it um, and I just like to include that even in just a very still pose like this so uh, for the hands I just do very simple either like ovals or um, kind of squarish wedges okay so that'll be where the hands go and that gives me the basic uh, proportions and simplified anatomy. Now let me point something out. So this now here's my chance to say, okay, this is something I'm kind of uh, I'm giving like a little copyright to. But I, I like to call it my light bulb. Um, I like to design a male figure like this with a light bulb shape. And this is going to be something that I'm going to point out to you throughout this demo. Is that I'm taking that chest shape, and again, it's kind of this rounded. Uh, rounded triangle and I'm trying to show you this this shape here you can say it's a skull or whatever I call it kind of a light bulb and that light bulb shape if I look at that as one shape because again a lot of people especially comic book artists look at uh, the 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 chest and the, the torso and the uh, pelvis as two very different shapes but they're connected and they should that pliability that you want when they twist and they and they tilt and you want them to kind of be thought of as one shape so I kind of like to think of them as one shape and so I can then start drawing and we'll, we'll jump back to this later but I can start drawing that shape with kind of a flow through it so now if I put the shoulders here we get a little bit more dimension to that light bulb shape and I can make it feel like there's a bend in this torso, you know, put the head here. Okay, so being able to move that around in a very simplified way, or my light bulb, um, will give us a lot of dimensionality and a lot of ease in doing sort of shorthand with the poses later. Um, so I'm just darkening this in real quick. 
this is the what this is the uh, this is our basic structure that we're going to use and again this is our uh, non-heroic male this is basically a more average male he's fit for sure but he's not our superhero yet um, we're going to start talking about that in just a second so darkening this in for you to see a little bit more and we'll talk about the crosshairs on the head and things like that It's a very, it's, a, it's the same but different of, of say how a comic book artist would draw. I mean, they, they, they do draw in a shorthand like this, especially when they're sketching out their pages. I just tend to not go then and add a lot of detail past this face. I mean, I, I just don't, because of my animation background, it's just not a necessary, it's not necessary. So, okay, so there's our basic shape. So now what we're gonna do is now that we have simplified anatomy, and, and this isn't groundbreaking, I think, you know, I'm copywriting the light bulb idea, but uh, it's not groundbreaking in that you see like those wooden figures and stuff that people use to pose uh, and things. Um, this isn't that far off from those basic shapes, you know, that basic breakdown of the two arms and all that. I want you to kind of look at it in a new light. So now we're going to do that same thing, taking those same shapes. And now let's start applying variety. So now we need to understand the shapes that are involved. Let's apply variety, which means changing those shapes, keeping them the same basic uh, uh, shapes, but now changing the sizes and uh, relationships. And now what we can do is start creating a whole lineup of different types of superheroes. So I'm gonna start here in the middle and uh, I'm gonna start with what I would call, you know, maybe a more basic uh, superhero. So I'm gonna start with the head still, but now I'm gonna add a bigger light bulb, okay? So his chest is really big. I may keep the waist and everything kind of small. This is gonna give me more of our superhero kind of the necks real thick so I'm taking that same tube neck now I'm flaring it at the bottom more and uh, so it looks extra wide the shoulders maybe I'll, I'll add even bigger ovals too and same with the arms now my tube arms are uh, a lot thicker And see how I'm really bringing the, I'm getting a little cartoony, I'm making small uh, wrists here, maybe real small hands. And I'm going to keep kind of longish legs. So this is going to be, I guess you could call it a little bit more, it's kind of cartoony, but it's a little bit more like comic book proportion superhero. Okay. So that'll be superhero number one, and we'll you know he's kind of kind of pushed. He's definitely a, a superhero. There's no doubt about chest and arms. Um, but now let's try one where maybe we keep the same head, um, but let's take it even further now. Um, and actually, we could go even wider now on that jaw. Keep a small cranium, but really wide on the jaw. Keep a really long, wide neck. And now we do like an even bigger, even bigger chest. Maybe uh, a medium sized. So our light bulb's still there, right? Maybe a uh, you know, little wider waist. But now shorter legs, okay? And real thick. So the, this part's real small, maybe even tiny feet to get real, a little more cartoony. And of course, big arms. So we'll go, I won't have room for them over here, but we're gonna go really big on his arms. And we'll have him, have him hang down a little bit lower too. So now he's got, proportionally to the legs, uh, his arms, are much uh, longer. It gives them that kind of hulking kind of a look. 
So you can see I drop down the waist and even though everything here is about the same, the feet are about in the same, I drop down the waist so I could get a bigger shape for the body, for the chest, bigger arms, so I went lower on them, but they're pretty close. They're, they, you want your, uh, your hands to fall about mid-thigh, so I still have that um, between these two, but um, because my legs are shorter and my chest is bigger, it takes up more room. So you can see, now I'm applying variety, okay? Um, and now you can go even further than that, and you can do all kinds of different variations of that. Of, um, and we'll try and do one here, um, just to get a little variety here too. And and now let's let's do um, kind of a a taller superhero with a small head and kind of a longer chin, right? So this is maybe slightly more cartoony. He's going to be sort of more, uh, I don't know, I guess you could say more of an uh, Olympian kind of a look. So we're going to have a longer, still big, but a longer kind of a, a torso and chest. So his light bulb, and I have him at a three quarter, so I can kind of fit him in here. So his light bulb is, his light bulb is a little bit longer, okay? Shoulders are lower, maybe. Let's go with that. And we can keep them wide at the top, but really narrow at the bottom. So we'll go real thin here, so that it keeps these. And then, you know, as long as legs. I'm actually gonna go past and make his legs even longer. So this would be sort of like, I don't know, the Flash or something like that, you know? Uh, a superhero that ran a lot <clears throat> might have more of a, uh, or a swimmer like uh, Aquaman or Namor uh, are going to have longer torsos. So this guy and this guy, so this guy's much taller too. Okay, so I turned him to the three quarter, but as you can see, he's. If I were to reduce them, get them up here on that same line, you'd be much taller than these two. Um, and the proportions are different. So I'm starting to play with really varied, varied uh, proportions, you know? And then you can go really far over here and create maybe a huge headed character. And again, I'm gonna have to go a little three quarter here. Um, so this guy now has a huge chest, like this guy, but he's not much shorter. So now what we're going to do is have a lot smaller uh, pelvis and a lot smaller on the legs. His arms can stay big. Okay, so that's even more cartoony, right, than this guy. Um, but we're starting to kind of push him further and further away from your average superhero, which this is pretty big chest too. <clears throat> okay, so that's playing with shape variety. Okay, now let's play with shape variety with the face. And so we get different looks to our superheroes. Okay, so now with the face, um, like I said, if this is our average head, okay, so we start with the cranium and the circle, and then I like to add on then, you know, this sort of V-shape for the chin and jaw. Uh, now, and these crosshairs, I want you to remember, what those are for are so we can know where to put the eyes and lock it in, even as we turn his head and stuff, we always know where they are. So I added sort of the rectangle shape uh, eyes above there. I just drew a line or so about where the nose would go. It goes about there. You know, eyebrows above that. Um, and then a mouth, and I may make it just a little higher. Give him a little bit of a chin. 
And this is more, and then the eye, uh, the ears, just so you know, they kind of fall at the bottom of the nose and the top of the eyes, so they're about here. And that's your average head, right? Now let's start playing with that. I'm gonna do a little bit bigger with the more heroic face. I'm just, the cranium is, I'm gonna keep the same, at least for now. Um, and because it's a skull underneath there, you kinda wanna make the cranium hard. And really, when you play with proportions, do most of your work below that, with the jaw and everything. Okay, so now we're just gonna do a wider, uh, a wider angle on the bottom. But now we can start playing with the size of the nose too. So we have the crosshairs here. I'll put the eyes in about the same spot, but I'll make a shorter nose. It's a little thicker. And I'm just doing a little wedge shape. Okay. And now I'm gonna, and again, I'm just keeping, and now I'll keep the mouth kind of high up so that we have a big chin. Maybe small ears too. That'll accent the chin. Okay, so now we're getting more of the heroic. I'll add the, the here's more of a normal neck on that. Thicker neck here. Let's start doing some more. Um, again, I'm gonna keep the cranium just basically a circle. Now let's do the longer kind of a chin. Get a little more cartoony here, but none, hopefully no less of a hero. So that'll give us a nice long, nose and that could be a different kind of hero too kind of a little curly cue to give you a hint of who I was thinking of and then from there, we can make a really wide neck too. And see how that now makes him feel just as heroic. Okay. And then let's play with that even more. So now we can then start applying that to like a three quarter view. Remember the crosshairs are so that we know where to put the eyes. And now because we're three quarter, this eye is going to be a little smaller. It's further away from us, so it's a little perspective. So it's going to have a little further away from us. Now we add the nose at kind of an angle, so it's, that wedge shape is here. And now the mouth just below that. Okay. One thing I want to show you as a hint is that you always want to make your jaw really wide on a hero. So we're going to throw the jaw back way back here. And I'm giving him a big chin. We'll even kind of flatten out the chin so it's kind of a, a harder chin on this guy. Okay, and a lot of this you need to know too because when you make expressions with your character, you need to know how to manipulate these shapes. So now we have a more heroic character from a different angle. And see, now we can start moving around because we know it's a ball shape for the head and now we know where to put the eyes because of these crosshairs. So we can even then do some tougher angles. Here's my same circle. Now I'm going to put the crosshairs here because I want them to be looking up, right? And there's, so now I've got my crosshairs. I know where the nose goes, the base of the nose is going to be here. I'm going to draw that same wedge shape. And then here's the, the rest of the head coming off of that. mouth and the eyes are going to go here and then one way over here so you're not going to see a whole lot of it. it's wrapping around that head okay same with the eyebrows they're wrapping around that head Put that ear back here now we have him look it up look how easy that was it's like one of the hardest things right you're always frustrated with that doing this shot but now you got it. Now you can put the pupils right here, look it up. Okay, so that, that's all just because you were able to figure out how to use those crosshairs to replicate your character. Add the little Adam's apple here. All right, so um, I really want you to play with that because now that you know how to change those shapes, now here, let's do one where we have the cranium really big. 
Okay, we'll do the three quarter. And but we taper his uh, his jaw so that the cranium is the biggest part. Because a lot of these the cranium's the small part, and we're working out of that. We we'll keep that head really big. Maybe maybe this is more like the Hulk. I don't know. We'll keep a big jaw there. But we'll keep because uh, like some characters are like brain characters, like Reed Richards or or the evil version of that. Um, and so they may have a big cranium because it makes it look like they have a big brain, right? So you may want that kind of a hero. And then a smaller, but still strong, you know, chin. And he's a thinker. Right? So again, we're still using those same shapes, right? We may be making a more rounded chin, we may be making more of a sawed off one where it's a chiseled chin. Uh, we may be making the cranium bigger or we may be making it smaller. But uh, now that we know how to use those shapes and the reasons why we have them, you know, because that's a lot of, a lot of the, the thing that people run into is that a lot of these art books, they don't explain why you're doing the crosshairs, you know, on the face. Um, I've just told you why. Now we know it's to create a dimensionality to your drawing so that you can turn that head around in different ways. Well, that was fun. Let's see. Let's move on to uh, posing. So with posing these characters now, um, and we might need to design a character real quick here so then, then we can pose them. Uh, so let's start with that. I'm going to start from scratch and create a superhero, a heroic male character. and. Um, and then we'll start playing with posing him, okay? And learn some things about that. So I'll start with um, my cranium. And again, I, and I'll do this three quarters. Three quarter angle is a, a good angle to do because then you get to see a little more dimensionality of your design. I kind of like uh, the longer chin, but a big jaw. Let me do a, a longish nose. I'm gonna keep it a little cartoony, so I'm gonna have a little rounder eyes. The thicker eyebrows, I think that looks good on the design. The mouth kind of high up, so that close to the nose, so we have uh, a nice long jaw. I'm gonna go through this kind of quick here. And here's my light bulb, right? I'm just gonna do it straight. Note, I kind of keep a flow to my legs and the whole bit too. I wanna to get that in there. I may run out of room here to make his all his legs, but this is gonna be our guy. Kind of basic, but heroic. And I'll have his arms taper quite a bit. It's kind of smallish hands. All right. And kind of smallish feet. All right, so that'll be our basic superhero. Um, you know, of course I'll add a, a cape back here, and again, this can just be simple, simple shapes. Um, and he'll have a, he'll have a mask, of course, because he needs that. So I'm just refining that a little bit. And I'm going to add, uh, you know, a little tuft of hair up here, because I always think that looks good. Maybe a little... Give him a little bit of a design so that we can kind of get something out of him. And if I had time, I'd go over this in graphite, of course, and really um, nail it down. He's got some kind of emblem here. Maybe short sleeve kind of a thing. It's almost like a, you know, we'll give him gloves here. Kind of a sporty look that he has. Right? Maybe a 
belt is kind of high. And then some kind of boots, but we'll keep them sort of form fitting. Okay, so very basic kind of a. Okay, so now we have a character that it gives us basic proportions. Now what I'm going to do is I will add uh, another piece of paper here and let's start posing him, okay? Um, and getting him into different poses uh, to show how that, that would look. Because now we, we're trying to think about how do we move him around. Because that's really the hard part, right? It isn't just the character design, but um, how do you move him around? So let's start drawing. And I'm going to use my graphite now so that we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to draw our light bulb, but I'm going to add a little bit of angle to it, okay? Because that light bulb can bend. We want it to be able to bend. It's like a rubber light bulb, I guess. Okay, so now I got his chest kind of coming at us, his pelvis coming at us even more so. Um, here, we'll add the legs then coming out of that, more at us. Again, I'm still, now I'm drawing sort of the whole pose at, as I go, but I'm thinking of the shapes. You know, notice that I'm still drawing the basic shapes that, uh, but I may be doing them a little bit more fluidly, you know, together. Uh, but it's because I, I'm thinking of this simplified anatomy that we've created. Uh, I can, of course, here's the neck. And then we're going to add, he'll maybe be looking off this way. So this is just a very, now the shoulders are still there. And we'll have this arm going away from us. Get kind of a dynamic. Again, it's still tapering as I draw it. And then this one maybe can be coming at us a little bit more. Still thinking of those tubes. And then I can always add in all the little details, so like the capes coming off here. It wraps around, you gotta kinda of think of it wrapping around. Okay, and then he's got the gloves, right? And the glove shapes. And remember, this arm's going away from us, so that's gonna be a convex circle here on the gloves. This one's coming at us. So it's concave curve right there. So those are, there's all these little tips I want you to kind of get as we're going through this uh, that matter. Okay. Um, yeah, and then a little bit of an indication of his hair here. Um, yeah, and now and we have the same thing where the pelvis is kind of coming at us. So I'm gonna make the belt kind of curving toward us, right? And it gives us a nice dimensional kind of a feel to this, okay? And the boots, yeah. All right, so that's one pose. And see how we're just building it up on top of simplified form, simplified form, adding a little bit more detail. Um, I mean, this is the fun part. Um, let's see, let's do him flying at us. Okay, do one more. And again, I want to think of my flow too. So I'm trying to draw my light bulb with some dimension to it, but also because now the light bulb's coming at us, so I'm going to flatten out that. While it's a little more round, we're straight on. Think of that as uh, this light bulb as um, when you're looking straight at it. Like I said, it's sort of this rounded square. But when it's coming at us, dimensionally, it, it's kind of like this. It's a little flatter. It's more of an oval shape. Okay, so this is it coming more at us. Alright, so that's kind of what I'm drawing here, is this sort of uh, flattened out shape. 
Um, the neck, of course, would be right in the middle. So this is the crosshairs. That means that I put the ball of this cranium here. And the shoulder on both sides. Right, it's got those wide shoulders. And I'm going to want these arms kind of coming at us a little bit more. Start drawing those tubes. And again, remember they, they taper. going away from us so it's getting smaller and smaller as it goes away okay and little tiny feet at the back there and then we can always build on top of that his face and things like that so if we have the cranium here I'm gonna maybe lower his head just a tad I'm not doing pretty final drawings here. I'm just doing really rough, rough sketches because the, you know, finalizing a drawing, which we will talk about in just a minute, is kind of the easy part. I'm talking his mouth a little bit. Here, blowing back, right? He's flying. the cake would be flowing back here. Yeah, I'm just drawing the wedge shape for the fingers and then breaking it up. Anytime you keep it in nice, simple shapes like this, it's a good idea. You can always add, break that up, and add detail as you go. Okay? So it's just that simple. You know, you just want to keep it nice and simple. So now he's, he's flying. That way adding the details but now you know where everything goes you know where the anatomy is all in very simple shapes adding layering on the details the clothing things like that uh, is awesome at that time I mean, it's, it's a lot simpler and it only defines the shapes and that's the thing is you want to be careful about let me just note this real quick is if I'm drawing an arm coming at me Right, and we're going to draw our simplified tubes, right? And then this one is kind of coming at us even more so. The elbows back here. All right, um, and here's the the wedge of the hand. This is basically just the palm and you know fingers, thumb. You just very simply make hands, okay? Um, because I know that this is going away from us, and that's coming. That's going away from us also. Right now, I know uh, if if this is say a character and he's uh, running, I know that I'm not going to add his shirt call his shirt going this way, right? Because now that looks like the shirt is going into his arm. No, I need to know but because that is wrapping around this way, this arm, and this is wrapping around this way. It means his shoulder, his shirt needs to wrap around that same direction so it's a convex shape not a concave okay same with if I, if I added a, a watch that's gonna wrap around this way around his wrist okay this is gonna overlap this line will overlap this so this line because we now know that that is this forearm is in front of that back back arm okay that's super, that's like a tip that you can think about, but I'm telling you, I can't tell you how many times people don't do that. They get the perspective off on what's coming at us, what's going away from us. They don't do the circles of the concave or the convex 
Um, because concave is down, right? Convex is up. Caving in, convex is up, okay? So that's these circles, and this is these circles. So making sure you get that dimensionality of the convex and concave is really key to getting uh, three-dimensional forms, even in the cartoony, very simplified artwork that we're doing. So that's concave and convex. It really gives you a lot of dimensionality to your forms. Um, it's, a, it's one of those tips or tricks I guess, that everybody's looking for, but it's, it goes back to the, the masters. I mean, really, even though we're doing a very simplified cartoon form, that's a principle that you really want to grasp because basically it has a lot to do with perspective and dimensionality in your drawing. So let's move on to another thing I want to hit as far as posing goes, which is uh, dynamics. Um, when you're creating your poses uh, for your superhero, and this is going a little further away from character design, this is more into posing and expressions and things, but I do want to hit it in that when we create a pose for a superhero, uh, you don't create, you know, a lot of people do really straight up and down uh, poses. So if they're like, well, I'm going to have this character, um, I don't know, it, you know, fighting, right? Here's a, in kind of a punching pose. I'm trying to do it real quick here. There we go, okay. I want to add some dynamics to it, so I'm going to have a little bit of perspective. This foot is in the foreground and this one is uh, a little further back. But he's punching, okay? I'm gonna punch this bad guy. But as you can see, it's very straight up and down. I, I think a better way to do this, um, and really the most dynamic part of this is this arm right here, the, the fist. Um, you got to think, and this is a little bit of, goes back to that Marvel, uh, how to draw the Marvel way book, um, is uh, dynamics. Now, everything straight up and down is pretty plain and simple. Anytime you want to create something with a more dynamic pose, you got to use angles. And by angles, I mean putting things at 25, 40 degree angles. And so, and that's why this hand right here is probably the most dynamic part of this drawing, uh, because it's really, and this leg here. Those are the two only elements that really have a little bit of an angle to it. But what if we apply that to everything? So let's put our torso, uh, uh, rather than our, our, our light bulb at a straight up and down, let's, let's make it an angle. Now it's already at an angle. Our, our torso is at a, a much more dynamic pose. Um, let's really throw this arm back. Okay, so that's at another angle. Now let's really make sure we do a big sweep of that, that punch. I'm doing this. There's our, our heading here. And then likewise, let's get, you got a nice uh, flow through here. We need to have, make sure that he doesn't fall over. So we got to have these legs really wide so that he can support this big thrust forward of his body. Let's see what that's. We're gonna throw this one back here. He's kind of, trying to hit a fly up here, I don't know. But as you can see, this is a whole lot more dynamic. Now we got all these, not only do we have a nice flow through the whole thing, uh, but we have all this dynamic angles. You know, this is at an angle, that's at an angle. The whole torso is at an angle. This leg, this leg, that leg. Even the head is at an angle, right? It's not straight up and down, it's tilted too. So because we have all those nice angles, um, 
and a flow through the whole thing, we've really kind of created a more dynamic pose, a much more dynamic pose. So that's another thing you want to think about applying your simplified anatomy to. Now let's put it all together. We've talked about your tools, we've talked about uh, simplified anatomy, we've talked about shape variety. Um, let's put it all together for one drawing, which would be uh, this one. I already pre-drew a few things, so uh, but if this was using my blue pencil, and, and I want to take you through this also because this is part of how I draw. I like to character design and illustrate uh, in these steps. So my step one is I do I, with the side of my pencil a lot of times I'll create this pose, okay? And I'm making it with all those angles and, and dynamic uh, feel as much as I can, okay? Uh, and then I start into uh, step two I start adding the interior details. And again, I'm still doing it with my blue pencil, but I'm really kind of trying to work out where everything's gonna go um, let me his pupils there. And now that I've got everything in the, in the right place, now I'm really thinking about all the little details and not overdoing it, hopefully, but adding simplified details to the costuming um, and the overlap and things like that. Now once I have that, and you can grab either a marker or you can grab a pencil, whatever you want, but I like to do a semi-tight pencil drawing. I can do that with my graphite pencil. I start really tying down uh, the details, maybe adding a few little shines and things like that, like I did to his uh, his metal cuffs. Hopefully, all along, making little step by step uh, changes and um, improvements. Um, now, with this, another little tip I, I like to do, and, and as you can see, I maybe I made a, ch a change to the leg. I made it a little bit longer. Um, what I can do with this drawing now is I scan it into Photoshop and that's what we're going to see next. This step four is me taking it into Photoshop and dropping out all the blue. And you can do that by hitting the channel, uh, go to the channel section, hit the blue and it drops out all the blue. Now I, and now I take it into grayscale, I go uh, mode grayscale, gets rid of all the color and now I have a nice crisp black and white drawing. And during step four, what I can do is then refine it. So sort of a 4A is me refining it in Photoshop. I can make the head a little bit bigger. And, and in this case, I made the head bigger. I made the arm, uh, gave it a little bit more silhouette, that uh, his left arm to pull it away from his shoulder. And uh, I also made the, that foreground leg a little bit bigger. Those things I think helps that drawing, made it even a little bit more powerful. Um, and then the next step is I can put another layer over that and add color to it. Um, and I do it on another layer very simply and um, then I just hit multiply if it's on top of that uh, graphite ink line and I end up with a pretty nice clean drawing that I can do very quickly. It's great for showing a client if you just created all these character designs to show a client or something or you just need some concept art for your comic book or whatever your project you're doing. Um, now I have a nice finished color uh, image that I could do probably in a really quick amount of time. I know this was a lot to swallow, but I really enjoyed going over that with you, and I hope you got something out of it. Uh, thanks for uh, watching this. This was How to Draw a Heroic Male. Thank you.